Hello everybody, Marty McConnell, the Off-Grid Gecko here, and today I'm going to be trying to harvest some wild mustard. So these have been drying in here for several weeks. Um, now, mustard plants, you can usually spot not only by the type of um, little beans that they make, but also by the flowers. Mustards are in the cress family, so when they come up, they'll make a whole bunch of little, like everywhere there's one of these little pods on here. There was a little flower in the shape of a cross. It's got four petals and they're equally distant from each other. When those flowers go to seed, they make these little tiny beans. And I'll get a, a close-up shot later of the plants so you can identify it. I think I actually did a video on wild mustard, so I'll link to that if I have. And what I'm going to do is basically put my fingers at the bottom of each little stalk here and pull from the bottom of the stalk to the top to get the little beans off and then what that's going to do some of the seeds are going to separate out immediately and the rest of them are going to stay trapped in these little husks so the main thing that i'm trying to accomplish is to get all these little husks into the bucket now this bucket is probably overkill for the amount that i collected but this is an experiment to see how this mustard turns out um, commercial mustard is grown for its seed and then the seeds mashed up usually soaked in vinegar or something like that and then uh, and then you go and buy it in the store but getting the mustard seeds themselves they can be incredibly potent so the best flavor that we're going to get is from these um, seeds so I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these guys wrangled up and then we'll move inside and just like the wheat that we harvested um, we'll go straight to the food processor here's kind of a close-up of the seed pods you see they look like little beans um, little miniature beans or uh, kale is actually a type of cress so it'll do the same type of deal and then we just empty them down here into the bucket one strip at a time and you might be able to see some of the little loose seeds in there hanging around uh -huh. got the stalk with that one Oh. I have lost a couple and so right. I still got wheat and all kinds of other stuff around. So yeah, this bucket was definitely overkill here. But um there's a little peat cricket in there. Save that guy for later. Mm. Alright. And a word to the wise who choose to learn from the mistakes of others. Ugh. Probably a good idea to wear gloves when you're stripping these off when they're dry because it cuts your fingers up. So now with magic recipe here, we're going to see if this works or not. Looks like it beat the hell out of the husks, most of them. Where are all the seeds? Ahead and take this guy out so he doesn't interfere. So far, it just smells like an herb. Um, need my thing. Where's my thing? Now, unlike with other grains, um, winnowing and mustard seeds, I have found not work particularly well so what I'm trying to do is get most of these husks out and just kind of shaking them around a little bit I want to save them because some of the seeds are definitely going into here and then with any luck I'll be able to filter out the seeds by running them through a, a mesh screen Just picking the, the husks off the top has seemed to work fairly effectively for getting these guys strained. So I can already see a couple little ingenious devices that we can use for this. So I could basically put this into like a type of funnel and just strain it and these guys should stay on top. Um, I 
I'm also going to try an ordinary colander. In ancient times, a simple basket, like a grass basket, could be used, but I'm not going to go out and whip one up because I got limited time, as always. When I get more time and uh, start getting everything a little more self sufficient around here, then things will hopefully clear up and I can do some of that fun stuff. But for right now, I'm going to try a little colander and a little pan and uh, see if I can shake any of the seeds loose out of this first and then if that works well then I'll add that to the mix and we'll get these guys all together and then we'll try the funnel technique to get the rest of the chaff off the top. appears to have worked fairly well. Put it back so I don't lose any of the remaining seed. And we'll try the same with smaller batch and see what we get. So that had a lot of seed and very little um, leafy matter in it. I don't know if you can see this real well on here. The lighting kind of is not doing well, but all these little pieces of husk remain and all the seeds went through. Go ahead and do it again for, uh, for educational purposes. thing so that we can see if we can get more seeds out later so empty pot empty colander we've got some pretty good mixture of seeds with just a little bit of chaff in them a little bit of chaff chaff whatever you want to call it put that in there now the goal here is to get the, the seed pods to lay flat so they don't go through the little eighth inch holes and at the same time, just rotate nice and gently. And this is almost like magic, so I'm gonna try and get a, a good look at this from from above. Because everything's better when viewed from above, right? So just watch as the seeds, like, they just kind of vanish in there below the, uh, below all these pods. So this colander thing is actually working out surprisingly well. I like it. So heck with that funnel because that didn't work worth the crap, but this works out pretty good. So you got a neat little trick and this will also work on kale seeds and other harvests of different types of cress. I just ran my leftover uh, pieces through the colander using the same method and um, not a single seed anywhere to be found in there so the colander method does leave some of the chaff with the seeds but um, ultimately it gets a lot of it out and there's no seeds left in the colander when you're done so definitely a marty approved method here all right well that was a relatively small amount of work for I think pretty good yield for the amount of work. I mean, mustard's kind of, if it's any good, then it's definitely something worth, uh, worth the effort. So what I'm going to do is put some of this into my little mortar and pestle here. And this is probably too much mortar for this. Small of an amount. Yeah, almost certainly. So, I need a smaller... Okay, so the little mortar and pestle here didn't really, I couldn't get enough meat on it, so I swapped to my medium. And this has got a little bit of a coarser interior, and it's strong enough that I can kind of pound on just about anything with it. Um, there is a little bit of water in there from rinsing the, the mortar out, but I can see the oils coming out of this already and coating the bottom so this one's definitely working uh. 
Now if you get one of these, um, coffee grinder might actually work best for this for most people. Um, I'm just a mortar and pestle kind of guy. This does take a little bit of skill and practice to learn how to use these and you just gotta kind of figure out a technique that works for you. But mainly, the concept is you're mashing this up between two rocks. So, that's that in mind. And this isn't... I was hoping this would powder up. Maybe it's just the water content or maybe some of the oil from the seeds. But let's see. Yeah, not real potent. They got a little bit of heat to them. But, um, ultimately, I mean, it was pretty easy to get the seeds, but these are not super flavorful, so I might have to look for another variety of crest to, uh, to try this with. But at least now I know, you know, this is a, a viable method. It works. So if I find another variety of crest out here with maybe like a little more peppery punch, um, I might definitely give it a shot. And depending on... Uh, hold on. So depending on the crest variety that you have in your area and what kind of wild mustard you have, um, this was a yellow rocket, I think, is what they're called. Um, so other mustard plants might have more effect, it might be better, or this might just be too small of a sample for me to really get a good flavor taste out of it. I mean, it definitely has its own flavor to it. It's kind of a strong earthy flavor with just a little bit of heat. So, not what I would expect from a mustard plant, but um, then again, the mustard that I'm used to eating has a lot of vinegar in it, so you get that sour, acrid taste. I might do some more experiments with this, just soak it in vinegar and make a paste out of it and see like how it turns out. Um, definitely something worth trying it definitely has a strong flavor to it if you get enough of it so that first um, deal there I just took a little tiny like half a grain sample um, but yeah you get enough on your tongue to taste it and it's definitely got like a lot of earth tones in it and a lot of interesting I'm gonna have to find something to uh, put it on and mix it with but I have a feeling once I mix this with vinegar like it's gonna create a kind of a potent mustard. It's just it doesn't have the heat profile that uh, that you expect with the mustard. So that might be interesting. It might be cool. I'll give it a shot and um, I'll try and do a video on it in the future to let you guys know how it turned out. For the moment, I'm gonna leave this unground. I may grind it up by the end of the day and then we'll try it with a little vinegar bath and see what comes of it. But I've got to get on to other things. So, I thank you for watching. I hope this was informative. It definitely was informative for me, like figuring out to use this thing to harvest mustard seeds. This is ingenious. And um, based on this, I think a basket, because of the way the, the weave lays flat in the bottom, so any kind of basket with holes in the bottom that are big enough for the mustard seeds to drop out is also going to work incredibly well and incredibly efficiently. Like once you grind these things up and you get all the seeds away from them and you don't necessarily need a food processor for that. I mean, you can mash them between two rocks or two boards or whatever, rub them and the seeds will come out. They come out pretty regularly when you're stripping it off the plant. And, um, and I did the kale uh, seed extraction without Mr. Food Processor here at all. So it definitely can be done. Um, yeah, but... There's the magic trick right there. Metal colander with little holes and drilled in the bottom. You're good to go. And this is a flat bottom so that when all the, the little seed pods get there, they just kind of float around over the holes instead of going through them. So I learned a lot. Hope you learned a lot. And I hope you keep watching and subscribe and all that fun stuff because I'm going to be doing a whole bunch more from the off-grid gecko channel. I'll talk to you guys later.